There we go. What's going on y'all? Welcome back to the channel. If you just saw that box, I've got some exciting news for you guys. We're going to be showcasing, unboxing, giving a partial review and our first impressions on a brand new reel for the second time this week. Man, I know it's crazy. It's another Daiwa. We picked up our first one ever from our friend John the other day. The zillion, like top notch, top high end, right? So I had ordered this reel already because I wanted to showcase a budget friendly reel, which is going to be what this video is really about. Showcasing something. This is now probably like our most affordable bait caster because over time we've just chosen to buy Shimano's things on a little bit of a higher price point because you do get what you pay for in fishing. The cheaper plastic components and a lot of these affordable budget bait caster reels are not going to last over time or hold up to some big fish but we're going to put this guy to the test today and we're going to take it to a spot where i've caught some decent sized fish before and see if we can really break this thing in a pond where we pulled out over five pounders and maybe we can link up with something big and see how this thing holds up because if it is as good as they say it is i think you guys are going to love this one it came in at like 60 dollars a very affordable bait caster option when you're getting into something like daiwa or shimano specifically those are the two top brands that we've been fishing with the most on this channel Let's go ahead and get this thing out of the box. We're going to rig it up quickly and we're going to head out to go fishing. I was literally just editing a video right here, thinking to myself, sipping on some Topo Chico, trying to clear off some SD cards. It's beautiful outside. It's like five o'clock and I bet you the fish are biting. That and the fact that I just got this thing in the mail today sparked today's video, which is let's go get this thing in the water and see how it performs. So let's do it. <laughs> Now to the garage we go. So, first of all, what is the reel? I may have put it in the title. I also may not have put it in the title, so I don't even know at this point. I'm gonna edit this video later today. I did do a little Instagram story post though, earlier. So I put some blue tape on the box so you guys wouldn't know the model, but never fear. It's gonna look just like new. And reveal the CR80HSL, which I think is like high speed gear ratio. L would be left-handed. So, but right off the bat, I'm realizing that it actually displays left or right when you buy a Daiwa, I assume across the board with all of them. Like if you were to get a Shimano and it was left-handed, it would be the 81. So 80 would be right-handed. The even number, the odd number would be the 80 spool size, but it would be 81, which would represent left-handed. So that's something different with Daiwa. I'm just going to cover quick specs, but I really want to break this thing out and showcase some first world use. So let's just cover this right here. It's a 7.5 to 1 gear ratio, which is their HS, I believe high speed. It weighs in at 6.9 ounces or 195 grams. It has 15 pounds of drag, it says, max drag. It, it cranks in about 30 inches of line per full turn of the handle, 29.7, and it's got seven ball bearings and one roller bearing. Fantastic. So, got your little instruction manual. Oh, dude, this thing's clean. It's just black, gray with a little gold on there, too. All right. And by the way, you guys, I just want to brag on today's sponsor and longtime supporters of us over here on the channel, Carl's Bait and Tackle. Uh, we get all kinds of stuff from them. I purchase maybe 90% of our tackle that we throw on a day-to-day -day basis from Carl's Bait and Tackle. And so what I did this month was I stocked up on some more of those tungsten weighted hooks right there with the underspin. These things have been just crushing it with some swim baits throughout the spring. We got some more Nico weights. We got some more clamps for like quick releases when I'm throwing some larger hard baits. We'll probably use this guy today actually because I have a plan for what I want to throw today. Day. Springtime, you guys, and I'm thinking a hard body bluegill swim bait, which we haven't thrown in a while. It's called the Jackal Gantrell Jr., which you can also grab at Carl's Bait and Tackle. We caught so many fish last spring on that thing that we need to just hurry up and get this thing rigged in on the water. So look at this guy, dude. I don't know what it is. It's probably just the fact that I know the price point that makes me think when I look at it, it's a cheaper looking bait caster just with the design but at the same time it looks clean I'm talking about the colors it's got the black the gray silver with a little bit of gold on the tension there and then on the handle as well the knobs are feeling good you can tell the material is not quite the same and as comfortable as like the zillion that we just got uh, it's feeling pretty smooth without any line on it without actually just casting it the spool size I guess is the 80 spool size so a smaller spool you might be able to get away with throwing some lighter baits on this thing without backlashing you know when you get like a 200 size spool reel you've got a lot more line on there almost like a denser heavier spool with all that and so if you're trying to throw some light baits it might not fly quite as well as with something like this so I am curious to see how lighter baits perform as well we might tie one on after we catch some on the bluegill bait just to see and check the casting and it looks like it's just got a standard magnetic clicking brake system 
and it goes all the way from your maximum down to your free and I would say it's probably got it's probably got like 20 clicks in there so we're probably gonna start by cranking this thing up all the way to the maximum I think it might be a little breezy today so we're gonna throw this thing on max brakes and really figure out the balance between where we want this for max distance and at the same time no backlashes with the bait that we're throwing I'm looking for a specific rod here is that it there it is and so this is a perfect model to reference actually. This is a Corrado with a 200 size spool. It's a little low on line, but the fact is this holds a lot of line and sometimes that Corrado 200 can be a little challenging to throw some lighter baits on. You can certainly tune it in and get it just right, but at the same time having a smaller spool is gonna aid in those lighter baits and finesse uh, tactics. So just figured I'd point that out. This is the rod we're gonna be throwing it on though, the Gold Reaction Rod. It's gonna have a little bit of a slower tip, great for treble hook baits and that's exactly what we're gonna tie on today. So let's put that thing over here and get some line on it and get to the water. And I believe this is the box we need. There we go, there's the beauty. This is what we're tying on tonight, man. I have so much confidence in this guy, especially in Pond's perfect size swim bait. Here's the full Jackal Gantrell. There's larger ones too. There's like the Gig Gantrell, the Giga kind of. But this guy is the like standard full size. I just prefer the smaller one. I've caught so many fish, two to fives, and uh, closing in on six pounders on the junior size. So let's go ahead and grab the line, stop dilly dying, man, I'm ready to fish. If you guys want to grab anything we use in today's video, it's all at Carl's Bait and Tackle. This bait, the rod, the reel, the line, everything is at Carl's. I think I'm gonna go with 17 pound fluorocarbon. It looks like there's barely any line left on this spool here, so we're just gonna probably not have enough on this reel to really like make a bomb cast. It's gonna be okay, first impressions. This is gonna look good on the Guggen Squad rods too, whether you go with the gold or the green series. Okay, so no T-Wing system on the $60 one like that uh, $360 one we just bought. I might not even have enough line to cast. This is gonna be interesting. Okay, so we really don't have enough line on this spool, but we're gonna make it happen for you guys today. All right, you guys, we have made it out. The spot is real clear, so it's gonna work well with this bait, but the grass is almost up to the uh, surface here, so I might not have the best chance with this thing at this exact spot. Might have to walk around a little bit. But that being said, you're gonna wanna tighten your drag up first thing. You don't wanna be able to just pull it that easy easily off the spool or as soon as the fish whips at this bait or you go to set the hook on a Texas rig anything like that it's just gonna slip and you're not even gonna get that hook penetration you're gonna lose that fish so when you're talking about a left-handed reel it goes like forwards away from the reel basically and if it's a right-handed reel it's gonna go clockwise so counterclockwise to tighten your drag on the left-handers and I like it where I can barely pull it off the spool there depending on what I'm doing right depending on how, how heavy my line and what I'm throwing there's a lot of variables there but if your drag is just slipping, you're not gonna catch those fish. And if your drag is so tight, specifically if you're pairing it with lighter line, like 10 pound or less, you're just gonna snap the line half the time when you go to set those hooks. So if you got it locked down completely, that's gonna be when you're just flipping, you're hitting some heavy stuff, some heavy line, uh, heavy rod, all that. Otherwise, you wanna be able to just pull it a little bit. And, and you'll know for sure after you catch a fish or two on every new reel where you kinda want it, because maybe there's even some slight variance to them, than just that little method. but. Uh, we don't have a lot of line on there, y'all, but it's okay because springtime, a lot of these bass are probably going to be creeping up shallow, so I'm not going to be bombing casts with this thing tonight. Forget about casting distance. This thing is going to cast exceptionally well. I can already tell. A reel in this price range, you know, s somewhere between 50 and 100 bucks, I have no doubt this thing's going to cast as far as you could ever want it to at these ponds or lakes. And we're just going to focus on how well it might hold up if we catch a fish. That is the goal. So let's go ahead and cast this thing out. Clear water spot. This realistic looking bluegill swim bait should bring bass right over to it, and we'll see if we can't get a fish on this thing for you guys yeah this thing will cast great i haven't even really fine-tuned it just yet and it's already getting good distance and that's on a seven foot two inch medium power moderate action rod so literally if you were throwing this thing on like a seven and a half foot rod this bait would be flying i just spooked a bass right off of this bed here he comes back oh wow this thing is locked i wonder if he'll go after a bluegill no way I spooked it off that time. Okay, well, looks like there's a lot of bass on beds here. Oh wow, there went another one right off the wall. Dude, these bass are hugged up against this thing. All right, we've seen a couple, but we're just kind of spooking some smaller ones off the bank. I'm gonna make a move to another pond, I think. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, we made it back into a little cut. Nice and quiet back here. I'm kind of realizing how smooth this thing is. I'm liking this thing so far. And I, I realize I've had it on max brakes the entire time. I could probably back it off a little bit. Maybe, I don't know if that was like five clicks or something, but it looks like it's about 75% on max braking. And then the tension I haven't adjusted at all either. It's just falling real fast, which is fine. But I might tighten that up just a little bit to decrease my chances of a backlash after I just... Oh, hear that? The reel's making a little bit of a noise, almost like it's too tight. Hmm, what's going on? 
maybe loosen us more. Is my line around something? It's making a little bit of noise. Y'all hear this? Y'all hear that? Let me just like loosen this all the way up. It's still doing it. Hmm. I don't know if it's the tension or what. Okay, well, $60 price range. Maybe that just happens. What did I do? I guess. Oh, well, we're going to throw it. I think it's going to find itself back to normal here in just a second. But regardless, I tightened up the tension just a little bit and I loosened up the brakes a little bit. So like in the reel so far, though, nice and easy to palm. Feels good in the hand. Looks fantastic on the Gold Series rods. Look at that. Just peeked out in the sunshine. I mean, it's like literally a perfect match for the Guggen Gold Series rods. This thing's going to go great on the gold or the greens just because it's basically all black, as I said earlier. So if you're looking for a budget combo, this reel paired with that Guggen Green go-to rod might just be the best bang for your buck for an all-purpose combo for crushing the banks. I just stepped in like a three foot hole right there. Good news is the reel didn't break, so yeah. I didn't hit it or anything, but you know, it's still here. Oh, there we go. Oh, no. Golly. Just had um, some flash. I saw there was a lot of action right there. That might've been our one and only chance. That was for this spot. I don't know if that fish got hooked good enough to like scare it off or if he'll come back for it, but dang it. I see a bass right below me on a bed, but I'm not sure if I'll be able to get him. Wow, this fish is locked. Do I have anything that would work good with this rod? Cause I'm really not sure. Okay, so this rod has an extremely slow or soft tip. So I'm thinking of like a, a smaller hook that would penetrate with a lighter hook set basically. So I've got this little Ned Rig craw right here. This might do the trick. It's got an exposed hook, a little bit smaller gauge. So I might be able to get this fish if he eats it. Even with this rod that's designed for treble hook baits. This might be all we need to test out this reel. See what happens if a good sized bass hits. I think this thing's like two and a half pounds. All right, we're gonna go for it. He's gonna freak when he sees this little crawl. This might be a first, first attempt. Thing's not even budging. Wow. This thing's smart, real smart. Oh does not like it oh wow we spooked it it's circling back though this one's locked y'all dang spooked it i'm gonna have to switch it up to something else come on man let's break in this reel it's got to be a color she doesn't like wow she ate it she ate it she doesn't like this color okay okay got it noted color scent something about it Got her, got her, got her. Nice. There we go. Top of the mouth. That's a good fish too. Drag's not even slipping, yo. Good fish. Come on, come on, good fish. Yes. Dudes, drag is not even tripping. Reaction rod. Oh, yes. That's a good fish, y'all. That's a nice little pond bass right there on the Ned Rig. Shoot. Thank you, sir. That's a good little guy on the Nedrick. So we found out exactly what she didn't like. She didn't like that orange color on the top. Woo, two bites in a row. Sometimes you just gotta switch up the color for those bed fish. Solid two and a quarter, maybe two and a half. Sick. And this thing handled like a dream, dude. Drag did not slip at all. And that wasn't even fully cranked, right? What, okay, that is a deal. All right, let's let him go. We'll see ya. I'm thinking that was the male too. I just saw a big wake. Maybe the female was going to come in and protect the bed now that he was off. Well, this whole night we thought we were going to get him on the bluegill bait. And we ended up getting him on the Ned Rig on a reaction rod. Definitely not the way you're supposed to do it. But the reel is what we were trying to showcase today. With lackluster amount of line and everything else included, y'all. What a success. All right, y'all. We are back at the house and air frying up some dinner guests. What we had an amazing time with this brand new reel for 60 bucks. I would say you can't go wrong and I would not be disappointed in this thing spending somewhere in that $50 range for a brand new reel, especially one from Daiwa, the CR80. Pretty slick little number right here, man. It threw out the bigger swim bait all day, no problem. It casted the lighter bait. I didn't even really think about it in the moment, but it was throwing the Ned Rig like it was no problem. And that's on like maybe an eighth ounce uh, jig head. So, I mean, literally it was casting the light stuff, casting the heavy stuff. 
no doubt so you can catch and crank some big fish with this thing with how little it gave on even that two to two and a half pounder that we caught right there at sunset. So with that being said, if you guys wanna pick up this reel, go ahead and check Carl's Bait and Tackle out. If it's sold out, I'll have a second link down there for you guys. And uh, yeah, rest assured, it will be money well spent. Nothing broke on us. I think where the expensive reels shine, the, you know, the $150, $200 class reels is in the long term, right? So maybe we should do like a 90 day test on this thing after really running it through some serious fishing and see how well it's performing then. Maybe maybe a button's not working as well, maybe a dial's falling off, maybe some gears have gotten messed up, and maybe none of that. And that's what we would hope for. So we'll be sure to use this more in the future videos. It's another left-hander for me. Devin usually throws the right-handed, so I've got something else to toss around some rigs on. And who knows, if we throw this thing out there on the lakes on the boat, maybe this reel will be the one that brings in my new PB. Anything could happen, you guys. So stay tuned to some more use with the Daiwa CR80. Until then, you guys, I'll catch you on the next episode. Thank you to Carl's Bait and Tackle for sponsoring today's video. Peace. <gasps>